Hey everyone, today I'm going to be bringing it back all the way to the basics. Forza Horizon is a franchise that attracts all types of players, from hardcore car nerds to people that don't know the difference between a steering wheel and a flywheel. And I figure with the holidays right behind us, there's probably a lot of new folks that have jumped into the game. Horizon may be a more casual car game, but it has its roots in real motorsport and expects you to have a pretty decent understanding of cars to get the most out of the game. So this video is a primer for absolute car and Forza beginners that want to learn more about automotive and Horizon specific terminology, but just don't know where to start. We're going to begin by explaining some entry level terms that everyone should know. Rear, front, and all wheel drive. These tell you which wheels the engine is powering. For example, in front wheel drive cars, only the front two wheels are powered by the engine. This is one of the biggest factors in determining how your car will handle. Rear wheel drive cars tend to spin out more. Front wheel drive cars tend to understeer more, that's a term we'll cover soon, and all wheel drive cars are a good balance of both. You'll often see all wheel drive cars used more often in off-road settings like rally, Many sports cars are rear-wheel drive, and you'll often see hot hatches and economy cars in front-wheel drive. Keep in mind these are big generalizations though. Now let's cover mid, front, and rear-engined cars. Most road cars will be front-engined, meaning of course the engine is in the front of the car. This adds more weight over the front tires, which helps increase grip and keep the car stable. Some performance cars though will be mid or rear-engined. It might sound like mid-engine means the engine is in the middle of the car, but really it's more referring to the engine's weight being between the front and rear wheels. Mid-engine cars still have their engines towards the back. Mid-engined is also sometimes called midship. Finally then, rear-engined cars have their engines over the back wheels, and these engine layouts are often reserved for serious performance cars as they're more challenging to drive but very fast and lightweight if handled properly. Where your engine is located in the car is another major factor in how the car will handle. So in order to quickly tell someone where the engine is and which wheels are powered, us car nerds shorten this info into two letter acronyms. FF, FR, MR, and RR. FA is front engined all wheel drive, but that one's a bit more rare to hear. And there is also the much less common layout R4, which means rear-engined four-wheel drive. Four-wheel drive and all-wheel drive are technically different, but we're not going to get into that in this video. You can treat them as essentially the same thing for the purposes of Horizon. You may be wondering why some possible layouts aren't mentioned, like for example RF for rear-engine front-wheel drive, and that's just because layouts like that don't really exist. Alright, so let's move on to more specific car terminology, engine types. The letter or word at the beginning describes how the pistons and cylinders are arranged inside the engine. V means the cylinders are shaped like a V. I or inline means they're all in a row. You'll sometimes hear this called straight if the cylinders are vertical or slant if they're tilted to the side. F and H mean the same thing. F stands for flat and H stands for horizontally opposed, but they both are describing a layout that looks like this. You'll sometimes hear F or H engines called boxers, and that's because it looks like the pistons are punching each other inside the engine. Occasionally, you'll also see W, which is more rare, but has cylinders shaped like this. You may have also heard about rotary engines, primarily used by Mazda, that don't even have pistons. Instead, they're powered by these funky little Doritos. The number that comes after the letter then describes how many cylinders are in the engine. So a V8 is an engine with 8 cylinders shaped like a V, and a flat 4 or H4 has 4 cylinders like this. You'll also often hear people talk about liters, like 5.3 liter V8 or 3 liter straight 6. This refers to the engine size or displacement, a measure of the volume of all the cylinders in the engine and broadly speaking, bigger engines can produce more power. Also, very small engines are usually measured in cc's instead of liters, but you'll rarely see that in Forza. Now, Forza uses some common engine swaps between different cars, so you'll regularly see engines like the Racing V8 or Turbo Rally. Because these are so commonly used when building cars, they often have their own abbreviations, like RV8 or TR. You might also hear some referred to by their real-life counterparts, like the LS from a Corvette 
or 2JZ from a Supra. And these are just the real engine names for the corresponding in-game engines. Moving on to some other engine terms, turbo and superchargers are two different parts for an engine that do essentially the same thing forcing air into the engine to increase power. This is called forced induction. A car that is naturally aspirated, or NA, is a car that does not have a turbo or supercharger. In Forza, you can often install or swap turbo and supercharger configurations in the conversions window. Now, every part in Horizon's upgrade menu is a real car part, but I don't think it's necessary to cover everything here. They're organized in a way that I feel makes good enough sense for a beginner to at least start experimenting. And you can check out my beginner's modding guide if you want a better idea of what to pick and prioritize, or my tuning guide if you want a better concept of what different elements of tuning do to your car. Now let's talk torque and horsepower. You probably know that horsepower is a measure of how powerful the car is but torque is the other half of that equation. Horsepower and torque are mathematically linked, and you'll see both on the dyno chart here. Simply put, torque gets you going and horsepower keeps you going, or torque is more related to acceleration and horsepower more related to top speed. You may also hear terms attached to horsepower like crank, brake, or wheel. Crank or brake horsepower, often abbreviated to BHP, describes how much power the engine itself makes at the crank. This is tested, for example, with the engine completely outside of the car. But wheel horsepower measures how much of the engine's power actually makes it to the wheels of the car and onto the road. Wheel horsepower will always be lower than brake horsepower because some power is always lost when transferring from the engine crank through to the flywheel, transmission, drive shaft, differential, axle, and so on down to the wheels. So wheel horsepower is generally the more important number. A car on a dyno will be measuring wheel horsepower. Now let's talk about the power band. A car's horsepower and torque numbers are measured at their peak, so a car with 250 horsepower isn't always making 250 horsepower. It's only making that much at a specific RPM. Your power band is the RPM range where you're making most of your power. Usually this starts somewhere around your peak torque and ends around where your peak horsepower is. And overall, it'll be higher in your rev range. A wide power band means the car is making a lot of power throughout a lot of its rev range. When someone says a car has a smooth power band, that means it accelerates smoothly and doesn't have any quick rises in power. For example, most naturally aspirated cars will have a smoother power band, and many turbocharged cars will have a steeper or more aggressive power band because you'll gain power very quickly once the turbos start to kick in. This can make it harder to maintain traction while accelerating. Understanding your power band is important for learning when to shift because in racing, you always wanna make sure your revs are staying within your car's optimal power band. All right, so that's the kind of basics of major car terms. Let's cover some car features that you'll see often in Horizon, like in the game's settings. We'll start with the braking. You'll see there are options for anti-lock on and anti-lock off. This is describing ABS, the anti-lock braking system. Pretty much every car on the road today has this. It's a very good feature for the average driver. What it does is intelligently manage your braking pressure to make sure your wheels don't lose traction and lock up. Without ABS on, you can apply too much braking force, causing your wheels to stop rotating and lock up while your car is still moving. Not only does this take way more time to slow down, it also completely stops your ability to turn because your front wheels have no grip, they're just sliding around on the road. Now for traction and stability control, often abbreviated to TCS for traction control system and ESC for electronic stability control, traction control manages your throttle and is able to reduce the amount of power you're giving the car when it detects that you're losing grip. This is especially noticeable when accelerating from a stop. With traction control on, your rear tires won't spin as much or at all because the car is limiting the power you're sending to those wheels. This is also noticeable in corners though. If you're in the middle of a corner and giving the car too much gas, traction control can help you prevent the car from spinning. Now, stability control is kind of the same thing, but for brakes instead of gas. Stability control detects when you're losing traction and can hit the brakes on individual wheels of the car to help keep you in control. For shifting, you have three options, automatic, manual, and manual with clutch. 
Automatic means the car will do the shifting for you. Manual means you have to shift the car yourself. And manual with clutch means you have to shift the car and manage the clutch pedal. In real life, there used to be pretty much just automatic or manual. Manual is sometimes called stick shift or standard. These days though, some cars have paddle shifters, tiptronic modes, sport modes, CVTs, and so on. And we won't get into that here because it's mostly irrelevant for Forza. Just know that manual means you have to push the buttons to shift gears. But as a side note, primarily in electric cars, you don't have gears anyway. You might also hear things like long or short gearing. Long gearing means that the gears are more spread out, or you'll be spending more time in one gear between shifts. Short gearing means you're shifting more often because the gears are close together. This is common, for example, on rally cars. A car with a narrow power band might benefit from shorter gearing because it needs to shift more often to stay within its smaller optimal RPM range. On the flip side, a car with a wide power band can often benefit from longer gearing as it will be making a lot of its power throughout more of the gear's RPM range, so shifting less will save time. Now let's cover two important car handling terms oversteer and understeer. Simply put, oversteer is when your rear wheels lose traction and you could spin out, and understeer is when your front wheels lose traction and you can't turn much or at all. These are two of the biggest handling problems you'll notice when driving. Front wheel drive cars tend to understeer and rear wheel drive cars tend to oversteer. Almost always, these are described as being bad things, but sometimes you might hear someone say something like healthy oversteer, and that means that their car is set up with just a bit of an oversteer bias, which can help you corner better. This is related to something called slip angle, where the car is just ever so slightly drifting, but in a way that makes it actually faster around a corner. Roughly speaking, a car that leans more towards oversteer is preferred over one that understeers, but every driver has a different preference here. You can also have both at the same time. For example, you can understeer on corner entry and oversteer on corner exit. So it's not as simple as just having one simple slider between over and understeer for the whole car. Now, steering angle simply describes how much your wheels can turn. Some cars in Horizon will have more or less, and certain parts like drift suspension can increase that angle. Contrary to popular belief, more steering angle does not mean you can turn more when racing. Steering angle can really only affect things like your ability to make very slow, tight hairpins, or more importantly, counter steer while drifting. Your weight distribution describes the percentage of your car's weight over the front and rear wheels. For example, a car with a 60-40 front weight distribution means that 60% of the car's weight is over the front wheels. Front engine cars, of course, usually have higher front weight distribution, and the opposite is true for rear and mid-engine cars. Now let's cover some more racing-focused terms. The racing line is the fastest or most optimal path your car should take around a track. Horizon can display this, but keep in mind that it's auto-generated and far from perfect. Use this only as a rough guide. Generally speaking, you should be using more of the road, turning in later, and braking less than the Forza Racing line tells you. The apex of a corner describes the theoretical middle point of the turn, where the driver should be the closest to the inside of the corner. A late apex means that the apex is further along in that turn. For example, a driver can take a late apex, which would mean altering their driving line to hit the inside of the turn later than normal so they have more time to accelerate in a straighter line. Finally, let's talk about some more common sort of slang terms. First, covering chassis codes. You might sometimes hear cars referred to by a combo of letters or numbers, like S13, FC, NB, and so on. These are chassis codes, and are great ways of distinguishing between different model years and generations of the same car. For example, all of these are Corvettes, but they all have different chassis codes. These are both RX-7s, but this one is an FC, and this one is an FD. These are all S chassis Nissans. Obviously, I won't cover every chassis code, but if you hear some random numbers or letters like this when someone refers to a car, they're probably talking about its chassis code. Aero is often shorthand for body modifications that affect aerodynamics, like front lips, side skirts, or spoilers and wings. Drag is something often talked about in Horizon's car building and refers to how much air resistance the car has. Many modern cars will have higher drag, and turning up your downforce can increase that drag, 
which will make the car struggle to accelerate at high speeds. A sleeper is a type of car that's meant to look slow but actually be fast. A livery is the term for a full car design, including paint and stickers, usually meant to be racing inspired. Now let's just wrap up with some more Forza specific terms that I think a lot of new players might not know. A meta build, or meta car, is one of the best at a certain thing, like circuit rivals or online road racing. And this term is sometimes used in a slightly derogatory way to mean kind of cheap or unrealistic. Not all meta builds are unrealistic or unfair, but that's how the term is used sometimes in Horizon. A purist build describes a car that's upgraded and tuned in a more realistic way to preserve the original look and feel of the car. These often won't use things like engine or drivetrain swaps or the default Forza arrow. Your car's PI is its performance index, the little number next to your car's class. It's a rough measure of how good your car is. Sometimes you'll hear people say an upgrade costs a lot of PI or isn't very PI efficient. And this means that the upgrade raises your PI a lot without being that beneficial. Good car builds focus heavily on mods with efficient PI usage. For example, front tire width will often raise your PI by a lot, but if you have tunable front aero and can turn up your front downforce, you don't really need a lot of front tire width. So many fast cars won't upgrade their front tires because that PI is better spent elsewhere on things like power or weight reduction. A power build describes a car with all of its focus on engine power and a limited focus on grip and handling. These are often better suited for sprint races and can be very challenging to drive. In contrast, you might hear terms like circuit, grip, or handling build to describe a car that has great grip and handling but not a ton of power. I'm going to finish off here by displaying a bunch more Horizon specific acronyms on screen for things like popular races, building and tuning terms, and gameplay elements. Feel free to pause the video to see them all. And that's pretty much everything. Now if I tell you I have an FRNA V8 swapped S14 power build for HMC, you will hopefully have some idea of what I'm talking about. So if you watched this video and can think of a term or phrase that I missed that you think players should know, feel free to drop it in the comments. And if there's something you don't know, ask away and I'll try to give you an answer. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you found this helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.